Welcome back to Adulthood Friends. This is the discussion-based podcast where two former childhood acquaintances, now friends, discuss the things that... Adverb, Simone? Any adverb you can think of. Slowly? Slowly. Yeah, the things that slowly matter. I like that. Slowly, that's your adverb of the week. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense, don't worry. It doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> so initially, it started with the... Truly, or whatever. Yeah, it started that we were saying the things that truly matter, and then we had a discussion okay. about whether or not an adverb was good there, and then we just started putting in weird adverbs. So that's the story of the adverb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And today, we have a very special guest, Simone Mendel, for episode 47 about healthcare. Anything to add to that? Or should we just get into it? I think we should just get into it. Okay. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. And we're back. Oh, it's so good to be back. Simone. (laughs) It's so nice to see you. Hi. Simone. It's been so long. You still have your same cute dimples. Yes. Yeah. Everybody can pick out my baby picture very easily because I'm the one who has the same dimple as I always had when I was a child. You look the same. Yeah. That's what, like from like grade one? You haven't aged. Well, you know, you've aged since elementary (laughs) school, but like, yeah, look the same. Yeah. Thank you so much, Simone, for coming and doing this with us. I was very excited. Well, we'll get into like what you do now and everything, but like, you know, we've all known each other since elementary school and we always, con- we've talked about you a bunch. We always talk about you as the smartest girl in the class. Lots to live up to. <laughs> so we're like very excited to get the smartest girl in the class on the podcast. Oh no. Yeah. Don't, don't put that kind of pressure on. Don't worry. You don't even have to try though. Like, even if someone was like, whatever, we'll see. Like you, you're fine. It'll be very obvious that you're the smartest. <laughs> I don't know. It's an excuse, obviously, to have you on to talk about the topic too, but also because, you know, we're friends and also, I know you guys will probably talk about that. You guys have been friends forever, like, especially even since back in elementary school, but I felt like you and I, Simone, we connected more recently. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, right. We hadn't, uh, there's probably a number of years in there we hadn't really talked while well, you went off and became a doctor. Maybe it's because you were all holed up in medical school. Yes. Well, studying, 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 I guess. And now you save lives. Some days more than others. Yeah. Try. I feel very, I don't know about other people. We had like somebody else who was in like the film industry on last time, a friend of ours and stuff, but I get really intimidated when I talk to doctors. Really? I don't know. Sorry. No, I do. No, (laughs) all my patients have high blood pressure when they come and see me. You know what? You're not intimidated when you talk to me, Josh. No, No, not like the Aya kind of doctor, not the PhD. (laughs) Yeah, You should clarify just medical doctors. Medical doctors. I I find, because I really look up to medical doctors, you know, not just the amount of work you had to do to get to where you are. But you just haven't met enough doctors doctors if you're still like respecting them like no I'm just kidding (laughs) no that's the wrong thing to say Simone you're great but like you'll meet enough to yeah you should just meet more it's like any profession I'm sure no I think it's one of the noblest professions okay (laughs) I mean it is but But I don't want you to meet too many doctors because that might mean that you're ill or somebody you know is ill and that's no fun oh that's That's true. true that's a good way of looking at it Simone so I hope I don't meet any more doctors. But like, Simone, do you think everyone you graduated with is like amazing and intimidating worthy? Um, yeah. Uh, oh, that's uh, nice. almost, okay. almost, almost a hundred percent. Oh, yeah. that's nice. That's right, Aya. Exactly. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll take it. Not to make you feel worse about it. You're, you're still a doctor, Aya. It's okay. No, no. I, oh. What I went through is not medical school. I would never, I don't want to cadaver, all the crazy shit they have to go through. No, that's a whole other kind of like, I, I'm not comparing it. I'm just saying. I, don't I, just, know. I mean, in some ways, PhD is harder because you don't have oh, Simone, you're so nice. the same like guideline sort of you must do this and you need to make the following or like a job and- afterwards. That's really yeah. sweet. Simone. Oh, yeah. That's very that you're so you're so sweet. That's very nice to say. I mean, it's different. Let's say it's a different it's kind of different. Difficult. Yeah, I wouldn't I can't even look at like needles and things like that. So I can't even imagine going through medical school. I just had, by the way, a needle in my arm today because I had a follow up appointment for that <laughs> so clinical that trial. <laughs> we keep checking in on my clinical trials. Uh, yeah, that's some cool stuff. You know what? I, yeah, I just talked to you about this, Simone, that I, I told you I was doing a clinical trial. I'm actually just wrapping it up now, I think 
testing some drug on idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. You know, I'd like to say I'm doing it for humanity, but you know, I'm doing it for the money. What? Do you- <laughs> what? I was going to ask Simone what she thinks of you doing all these crazy things. Well, I'd love to hear more of that too, but I was really happy when we spoke on the phone, Simone, that you were like, not judgmental about that. <laughs> like everyone else. <laughs> like everybody else. I guess I see the other side where, you know, I have patients who are using these drugs or like, I, I think when we first talked about it, you were in a trial on one of the biosimilars. Yes. That was for a Crohn's disease drug. That's like a huge thing because otherwise like those drugs are so expensive mm-hmm. and you know, when they're off patent and now you have these biosimilars, they're cheaper and that, you know, it's horrible feeling like you could treat a patient with a medication and like not being able to use it because they can't afford it. Yeah. You have no coverage that would pay for it for them. So I, that was the one, the, so the last, not this one, but the last clinical trial I did, I did one, it's a biosimilar, right? I remember. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. It was like basically a generic version of it was a the drug. immune suppressor. Uh, it was technically an immunosuppressant, yeah, that yeah. I took during COVID times. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Was but. it like a tocilizumab biosimilar? Because- we could have used some of that for COVID. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have any. <laughs> I was happy to know that what I was participating in was like, if this drug went through, you know, this Crohn's disease drug, this generic biosimilar version would be cheaper for people who needed that. And yeah, I'd really love to get into, you know, the differences between that in the US and Canada, for example. But before we jumped into that, actually, uh, Simone, we were hoping to talk about, yeah. for anybody who doesn't know who's listening for the first time. How do we know each other? Yeah, how do we know each other? When did we meet each other? Yeah. Do we like each other? Did we like each other? <laughs> yeah, we did this with the other classmates that we had on as well. Yeah, we did this with the other ones. It's fun. And also partially for our own curiosity, because I have no idea what you thought of me as the kids so yeah and we can start to give you an idea i remember like the first day of well I, i'm just kind of jumping in now but no, yeah please. like how do we know each other so i remember you joined us in grade one yeah and i remember you came i don't think it was right at the beginning of the year no it was part way through it would have been at least a month or two into the year right because my dad was killed in august and that was like in Sterling. And so my mom was also injured and we could like, we had first of all, no car anymore, but like she was in hospital for a while. So we were with my grandparents. So I actually started school in Sterling. I don't remember what month it was, but my school photos were still taken in, in London. So it must have been like October or so. Yeah. So you came in part, like a little bit into that year, right? Yeah. Following the car ex- the car, the, the, or accident. I don't know if that's the right word, but the that, that, the crash, right? Yes. Yeah. I remember when you came into the class, like that was obviously everyone was like, it was something we were talking about, you know, like, oh my God, this girl just came into the class and she just lost her dad to it's a drunk driver, right? Yeah. And that's literally, that was our first impression. I don't know about you, Aya, but that was the first. Yeah, that like, was the first impression. I remember being like, oh shit, we should do every, uh, like, even though I was kind of like a shitty kid. I remember being like, True. we should be welcoming. You're a grade one. There was, you can't say you were a shitty kid. I was kid already a one. shitty little kid. No, I was just kind of a jerk. But like, even for me, I was like, this girl just lost her dad and she's coming to a new school. And we were in grade one. We had no idea. We didn't understand. That was like our first, I don't know about you. That was my first experience hearing, you know. The- I think that was the first like other kid I knew who had gone through something like that. Yeah. And it was just like, man, we should. So I remember being like, come sit with me. I don't know if you remember. I kind of, I feel like I remember you sitting next to me. I don't know if that's, if I made that up in my head. I don't have like specific memories, but I definitely, I feel like you were one of the first people who befriended me. Yeah, I remember that. I was like, she's my new friend. (laughs) I felt like everybody was welcoming. Oh, that's good. Like it it was also, I I mean, I hadn't been there in kindergarten because we were in Israel that year. So I really didn't know anybody in the school but yeah I felt like everybody was welcoming yeah and you were I feel like you fit right in and I didn't like I hated everybody you didn't like anybody but I liked Simone but you liked Simone (laughs) she was so easy to like like even now like you're still I mean you've got that same like you're just you're nice to everyone you're smart you're like what's not to like and I was as I said I was like kind of a not that I was I wasn't mean to people Josh let's relax but like no no I do (laughs) Shut up, Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. But like, <laughs> I do remember first it was like, oh, she's new. But then it was like, oh, I really like her. And we were like, you were my best friend when we were in elementary school. I think I had like a picture of you when I was like a kid. It was like a picture and you went to like Chile 
and I like missed you. So I like put it on my bookshelf and my mom was like, oh. yeah, she was like, she's just gone for a few weeks. Like relax. And I was like, she's my friend. <laughs> You've got Chilean background, right? Yeah. So my father was born and raised there. So I go back periodically. You were just there, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time I've been there for my birthday, actually. That's cool. By the way, happy belated yeah. birthday Thanks. again. Welcome to 33. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the year I would have gone in elementary school, that would have been, uh, I think, grade two. And that so that was my father, my father's, my grandfather's 75th birthday. Okay. But they had the party a little bit after. So I wasn't actually there in March. It was like April or something. Mm. And you brought us these necklaces too. It has like a little clay, like a little symbol on it. Oh, cool. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just I, know. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that actually. Yeah, I still have yeah. it. They were probably from um like the petroglyphs or something yeah. in the north. I not that I'd actually gone to see those, but there's like a little artisans village in Santiago that like has Ooh. artisans from all over the country. And so oh, I feel cool. like I know about all these places, but haven't actually been to any of them. Oh, that's cool time. though. But still, at least you got you get to experience it through the artisan world. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it's true. Aya and I have already obviously talked about what we think of each other uh, at yeah, nauseam. I'm tired of it. Yeah. <laughs> but I kind of already said this already. But yeah, Simone, that was, you know, obviously my my first impression, you know, what just what I had heard. But my memory of you, like I said before, was just like you were the smartest girl in the class. I've always, uh, I don't know if I told you, I looked up to you. Uh, I looked, I always looked up to intelligence and people and, and you were also very, you were super sweet as you may or may not remember. Not everybody was nice to me, uh, growing up. Sorry. <laughs> that was not you. You were always very sweet, but yeah, that, that, that was generally my memory of you. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I didn't know you as a person very well at all in elementary school, Josh. Yeah, okay. That's I, true. Boys and girls were always kind of like separate. It was more of point. a division between, yeah, yeah. But even more so, yeah. I felt like, yeah, I didn't yeah. know you that well. But I always had the impression that like you were cool. Oh, really? Josh? Yeah. You're the first person yeah, ever. Yeah, you're definitely the first. Who said that. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> really? Like, he, he knew all these like interesting words. Oh, that's so they, like, remember the most, thing. like, you know, the things that like people maybe made fun of you for, but like were actually like, you know, like the rotating dictatorship thing, oh. right? I was waiting for but, that. But like, I love that she remembered, <laughs> even though we haven't talked about that. The rotating dictator. Uh, Just for anyone that. listening for the first time. <laughs> I'll never forget that either. I would say that Canada was a rotating dictatorship because my dad told me that Canada was a rotating dictatorship. Yeah. I just repeated what he oh, said. That's so interesting. So some of the things that we were that you were made fun of, Josh, is what Simone you thought made him cool. Like, oh, he knows like defenestration or whatever it was. Like yeah, well, you my know, favorite word was defenestrate. Yeah, to throw someone out a window. Yes, I know I do remember that. Yeah. But like, yeah. I thought even then, I mean some of this may be hindsight as well but I feel like I thought even then that like you weren't afraid to kind of voice your own opinion even though it's different from everybody else's Aww. and I think that's cool that's such a sweet thing to say oh that's the best thing anyone's ever said here yeah it is it's true that's so nice yeah definitely the best <laughs> thing anyone said about Josh <laughs> I'm so sorry I say that every time someone says something nice about okay him. for the record not everybody comes in craps on me here but that's so nice no that means a lot, even if you're just being nice. No, that's, that's, very sweet that's a good way of looking at it. It's like little kids who are already like, I'm going to say what I think and I don't care if it makes me cool or not, but that makes you cool. Yeah. I mean, I also admire that because I think I would have like been afraid to be different in some ways. I had no self-awareness, so that wasn't an issue. <laughs> <laughs> works too, but yeah. Oh, no. oh. It's so nice. That is very sweet. And, you know, it's interesting. What I thought of you then has only kind of you know, sometimes people grow up and then you change you know, better or worse, like your thoughts of them as whatever they were as kids, but it kind of only positively expounded on what I thought of you as a kid. So like now I think you're even smarter and even sweeter. So like, like I told you, I love talking to you and I personally can't wait to just hear from you because I always feel like I learned something when I talk to you. But I also wanted to say, I remember, I don't know, I if you remember this too, was it in grade, I guess it would have been in grade one. We did this uh, booklet that we all worked on together. It was like grade five. Are you talking about the like kids against drugs thing? Wait, no, it was grade five. Yeah, that was later. That was Sorry, it was grade later. five, but I remember, I guess it was inspired because- um... I think it was grade four. Yeah, maybe grade four. It was definitely um, a little older. 
but it was Nishlapidus, Janet Nishlapidus. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, with the principal slash our teacher. In that room, like to the left as you go in up the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kids Against, was it Kids Against Drugs? Kids Against Drunk Driving yeah. or Drugs or something? I think we yeah. said drugs and just included alcohol. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And I remember, I remember that being interesting because me personally, it was like all the girls worked on it and then me. I don't know. None of the other guys wanted to like do this for some reason. I didn't remember you were part of that, Josh. Sorry. <laughs> I was and we have a picture of it. We can post the picture no, of this. Please. Amanda sent the picture. I it was remember. me, you, Simone, Amanda, and was it Rif- oh, Rifka? Oh, yeah, there were. Rifka Weisdorf? Uh, was it her or her sister? Someone. It just... Is still with us in grade four? It wasn't in our. I don't think it was Rifka. I think it was her sister. I just remember really value, you know, that work we did on that booklet. Like I kept it. And oh, that's... I don't know, it meant a lot to like work on that. It felt like so important at the time. And yet now you're on so many drugs, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is still to help people. Okay? Oh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm doing drugs to help people. Those aren't the kind of drugs we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're not against those drugs. I don't know if you guys remember working on that. Vaguely. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, I don't remember anything I actually like wrote for it, but I remember working on it yeah. sort of I remember it was blue the book was blue yeah yeah huh. so that's you know we went through elementary school together and we were also all wait were we all in the same high school yep. together yeah we, all yeah, we were yes. only Will and Michael I think went yeah. to Central and we all went to Lucas yeah did you guys hang out much in high school no not a lot we no. kind of went our own I mean like I think we had maybe had some classes together we kind of like drifted around grade eight even yeah we sort of different friend groups, different friend groups. Well, sort of. although there's yeah there's some overlap there was some overlap I think you were you had like yeah there were like smart people mine had I had some smart people in my group but they weren't like the <laughs> smart people I don't know. <laughs> that's a terrible the thing smart to say people versus smart people yeah like some sprinkled in mixed in with some like burnouty people <laughs> and Simone's was like more exclusively like we are smart we are going to med school and or other schools maybe that's an oversimplification as any group definition is. Yeah. It's one thing to be like the smartest kid in like elementary school where we had 70 kids in the whole school, you know, and 11 or 12 people in our class, but also to be one of the smartest people in our high school, which we had 1400 and it was a public school. I mean, I recall like you were up there with, I remember Yaru Lin, David Wang. Oh, Yaru is definitely smarter than me. No, nobody's smarter than <laughs> no, you. No, I think you guys were all, at that no. level, you guys were all. Although Yaru Lin is quite smart, but like, no, so, yeah, I mean, we don't have to rank of... people. There's different kinds of smart. Yeah. There's many times as smart. Yeah, but you were always, well, too, you were smart, but you weren't like, you weren't just, you felt holistically smart too. You weren't just like. That is actually a good point. Yeah. I was like, that's a hilarious way of putting right? it. it was, but yeah. You weren't just like smart in a very narrow, like, oh, this person's really good at math, but otherwise they yeah, don't you know were how good to, at everything talk to anybody or something. Yeah. 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 This is true. And actually like, so one of the things I remember we used to do, like, so Simone and I would hang out at recesses and do different things. This is a side story, but like we would feed the ants in this one corner yes. do you remember yeah. that sometimes like oh, yeah. your your poor triscuits like we would like sprinkle some triscuits and then we'd be like "Ooh, the ants have found some nice food like we would collect the black walnuts i remember you told me that those were black walnuts which i found funny because now i like yeah. i go around i'm like those are black walnuts and like really and i'm like yeah my friend in like grade two told me that so <laughs> yeah we would collect those and then like the the squirrels would steal them yeah but i'm glad you remember the ants too because that's a fond oh, yeah. memory of mine we were like we have to go feed the ants yeah. but the other thing i was going to say was i remember i was like obsessed with this fantasy series by david eddings and i yeah. i was always trying to get other people to read the books i was reading so that like i could talk to people about them and like nobody does that like who reads books so that they can talk to someone else about them i'll tell you who does simone simone does because <laughs> she read the series and then we would like talk about it and like I think you read all of them eventually. I might have ended up missing one or two of the peripheral ones. Yeah, me too, though, because those were hard to get at the time. Yeah. 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 So I I just remember like Simone reading the books I liked and it was just like, I mean, that's such a nice thing to do. But also it was like, yeah, she's not just science smart or like, I don't know, you know, like literature smart and like other kinds of smart, just and like a nice person. So you mean you're making the same point that I just made? Yeah. But with examples. (laughs) With examples. Yeah, I, I was just saying stuff, but you're like, like a proper yeah. argument that has examples. Okay. You're like somebody who like did a thesis and became a doctor. Yeah. Well, oh, wait. 
Okay, Josh, this isn't about me right now. Dr. Ishai. You're just trying to make up for... I'm trying to make up for a little bit. I feel a little bad for that constantly I kind of... repeating that I wasn't the smartest. No, no, no I actually like, really I'm look okay up to Aya and her doctorness as well. No, shut up, Josh. I mean, <laughs> if, it's true. If there's one person that I never minded having smarter than me, it was Simone. I would like argue with other people, but like, I was like, okay, Simone can be... I know she's smarter. I know how much Aya likes you because every time we mention your name, every time we mention Simone, oh, Simone! And she gets like this <laughs> every single time. Oh, Simone! Every oh, time? Simone. That's silliness. I should stop it. <laughs> every time all right do you have any other how we perceived each other anecdotes and or points josh well i was oh. wondering so yeah like i would say personally like during high school i don't really i just remember kind of the group of people i think we intersected with some of the people we hung out with but i don't think we got to know each other that well you and i simone in those years unless i'm forgetting something no i don't think so no, because I was more like I would like drama. I was, you know, a whole other world. I do drama class and music. And stuff Were like you in that. band, Simone? No, I wasn't oh. in band because I didn't want to take music because I was taking music outside of like I was already taking flute outside of school. Right. I remember you played the flute. Yeah, okay. You're right because I was in band. You I, were in band. I told oh. uh, I told you why I joined band. Right? Was it a pretty girl? I feel like that's always why people join. Why boys it was, join band. at the time I had a crush on Kira Cole. Okay, exactly. So a pretty girl. Yeah. Okay. We were in like music class in grade nine together. And like they asked who wants to join band. She like raised her hand. So I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll join band too. <laughs> oh, 12 year olds or 14 or whatever. Hell. Or whatever it was. And then I was like, oh, great. Because we lived like around the block from each other. So we carpooled for like one or two times. And then she quit band immediately. She was like, this guy's obsessed with me. I don't want to be here. No, no, that's not. She just decided never mind the band. And then I stayed there for three years. <laughs> And I played the tenor saxophone. There you go. Interestingly enough, later on, my girlfriend was her neighbor, which was always, I would always be like, oh yeah, that's the girl that I joined band for. Yeah, I don't know if we had any classes together even. Maybe grade 10 history. Maybe. I actually, hmm. I have a very bad memory of high school for some reason of like, I don't actually remember teachers hardly. I don't know what happened. I have like, it's like sucked out of my mind. Too many drugs. Josh, you didn't <laughs> follow didn't our, t- our pamphlet. We were trying to teach you. <laughs> I didn't do drugs. Trying to warn you. No. <laughs> but yeah, after high school and then did you go to, you didn't go to Western, did you? No, I went to Mac. I did the arts, arts and science program in Mac. Mac. McMaster. Yeah. Arts and science? Oh, yeah. I remember you went to Hamilton. Yeah, it's like its, it's own program. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's not the like direct entry med school program the way the health science program program is Mm. but it's actually a smaller program and there were still a lot of med school people in it but it was cool because they had a lot of like interdisciplinary kind of classes and they also had just like smaller classes oh that's way better did you always know like when you went into when you finished high school did you know you wanted to be a doctor yeah that's what I was wondering too oh no (laughs) <laughs> no, no, I think I decided. So I actually applied to a couple of graduate programs in well, a graduate program in the States, which I didn't get into because the, their applications were earlier. So I figured okay. I could apply to the grad schools here later if I didn't get into med school. But like I ended up being like, I don't really know what I want to do. And then I was like, yeah, OK, I guess I'll write my MCAT. And I was like, yeah, I don't really want to do research for the rest of my life right. because then I have to write grants. And constantly asking for money please it's like really cool. what i'm doing is important please give me money i know Which but is it's like, like science like for constantly. the sake of science that's true that is a beautiful oh so you're considering research for a bit i was yeah i was considering doing just like basic science i worked in a genetics lab in undergrad the clawed frog genetics and we had a bunch of clawed frog like live clawed frogs in the labs and i got to oh, so you worked on that. frogs yeah wait what are clawed frogs they're from africa they they actually don't have tongues and they have claws on their toes oh claawed oh, oh C-L-A. I, I was picturing c-l-o-d c-l-o-d and like, my, my brain was doing that too. clawed <laughs> frogs interesting yeah oh i've and never they, like, heard of them feed them froggy kibble Huh. And they'd like eat it like this. They'd what? like shovel it into their mouth. That's so cool. They're so cute. I'm Googling that after. You may have done. heard of the, the actual name. So Xenopus levis. They're the frogs that they did. The, did like, you say I might have heard that? I've never. <laughs> you overestimate my intelligence. <laughs> like, that's for sure. Maybe Josh. Mitosis, meiosis experiments they did uh, in those because their eggs are really big. And so they could actually see them under the microscope. Oh, so they were very useful for that. Cool. I digress. Oh. oh, that's so interesting. That was a cool digression. Did I don't did I tell you that I also worked in a lab, but we experimented on cats? No. I know. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. No, it was Simone's face. I shouldn't have said anything. 
So what experiments did you do on cats? Or cats. Pick anything else. Wait, for the record, <laughs> when I was an undergrad, Simone, I did developmental cognitive neuroscience. Okay. So when I used to do smart stuff. What a nerd. When I stopped doing smart stuff. But I used to. And I thought I was going to be a clinical neuropsychologist or something. So I joined this lab of this professor. His name was Dr. Stephen Lomber. And I brought this up to you before, Aya. But uh, they were studying cortical reorganization and neuroplasticity. Okay. He was developing a way to do... You know how you can do like within subjects experiments or between subjects? Mm -hmm. You might want to do a within subject study, you know, to test how, let's say, a drug affects someone or something given a certain period of time. So you give it and then you see what you know, the changes and then you wait some time and then you see without, right? That's within a subject instead of between different subjects. Mm -hmm. But the problem is when it comes to brain studies, if you are doing, let's say you do a lesion, you know, you damage part of the brain, you can't do a within subject study because once you damage the brain, you can't undo it to see <laughs> afterwards. So you could only do between subject studies, but this professor figured out a way to do a within subject study. He developed basically a temporary lesion of sorts with these things called cryo loops. He would install in these cat's brains and that would basically freeze that part of the brain to the point that it knocked it out. It didn't work. And then when it unfroze, it worked again. Cool. So they were fine? They were fine, but they would kill them like after. Like <gasps> Why? Cool, right? I don't know. I got upset about it myself. Left that part out. <laughs> I know. I know. They, Why, Josh? When they were done with the cats. So uh, my job, first of all, I didn't do this to the cats. I was trying to like get in with, I was just volunteering basically in this lab. Who let, but who let that ethics go through? They were lab cats. They were bred for it. Oh so God. I trained the cats. I would have adopted a lab cat. Yeah, I would get a lab cat. No, it's they were super like, sweet. The cats at least. For the record, I didn't like that but i would train them so i would get attached to them oh my god that's horrible I, yeah i remember there was this <laughs> one cat that was considered like super dumb it never did what you wanted it to do mm, i want that one but i think that cat was actually the smartest cat yeah yeah he was like fuck this i don't want to be a lab cat i'm gonna not do what they want and see what <laughs> no, happens Maybe because as long as you didn't do it right you got to live yeah oh. <laughs> So he's actually the smartest cat exactly that cat knew what was that i would have stolen them all and been like i now have a an apartment for lab cats yeah i don't tell everybody this because they don't like hearing that i stuff on cats i don't want to yeah. is that robert's that was um they actually did this in the this was on the top floor of the social science building actually okay. it was like a weird lab so, with a key card are they still doing that that's pretty messed up to be honest like i know that frogs have feelings too but like i don't know it's different like a scaly little amphibian and like a, i know the cat a cat that, that we... actually the cats look like little frankenstein cats too because they it would install these things in their brain but then you'd see it sticking out of their head Aww. and they would be walking like the cats didn't know any better they're just walking around like whatever but it looked kind of freaky with these like contraptions sticking out of their head okay just for the record, we didn't intentionally kill the frogs, by the way. Oh. I mean, my supervisor would go out sometimes in like to Africa, obviously, because that's where these frogs live and like collect frogs that he ended up killing. You didn't kill them afterwards? I, I never intentionally killed any. No, they would die sometimes because they have a lifespan. But oh. I mean, all you need is some blood for DNA because it was oh. a nice lab. So for the most part, I mean, then they sometimes harvested like their testes to actually create more froggies. Okay. I got to make tadpoles for my thesis. Oh, that's so back. cool. But yeah, unlike the cats, we weren't murdering frogs. Trauma. That's yeah, really I, messed up. Yeah. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Like, why did they have to kill them afterwards? I don't understand. That. You know what? Actually, that actually steered the whole direction of my life, though, Simone, after that, because <laughs> I told Aya this. I would go all the way up and down when I volunteered at this place up and down the elevator nine floors up nine floors down you know throughout a summer and i ended up like getting inspired by this elevator and i shot a movie in that elevator called elevator josh we're not <laughs> talking about elevators we're talking about cats right now <laughs> <laughs> weirdly enough that volunteering at that thing led me i ended up you know going into filmmaking oh i thought you were gonna say like you were so traumatized by the fact that they killed the cats afterwards and then you were like i can't do this i'm gonna go like take some Film. I mean, it was a little traumatic, but I was actually more traumatized by the fact that I worked for this professor for like a while, hoping he would be my thesis advisor. And then he didn't know who I was like when I went to he go. He clearly has no soul. Like this is a sociopath. <laughs> what? What kind of a person is this? He's yeah. like, who are you again? I was like, I've been working here. I killed cats for you. I was like, I was wondering if you'd be my thesis advisor. He's like, oh, come to me in a few more years. I'm thinking, I'm not what a dick. What's his name? <laughs> his name was Dr. Stephen Lomber. Okay. I don't think it wasn't what? a day. I mean, he was like, oh, by the way, this whole stuff they were doing was to help people with, uh, they were trying to design like cochlear implants 
or improve cochlear implants. Sure. Is it cochlear or cochlear? I say cochlear, but it doesn't. I've heard both. Oh, okay. I've heard, I heard it as cochlear. Now that you say that, it starts to sound wrong to say cochlear. But... Well, no, I don't know. I, I legitimately don't know. I'm just asking. It's cochlear. But like, I don't understand why you would create a way to only temporarily damage the brain and then still kill the animal. That's what I, yeah. I thought like, the... oh, that's smart. So they don't have to destroy. I understand that they're doing it so that they can work on the same subject when it does work and when it doesn't work. But then like. Exactly. Exactly. They didn't do but it then to, they... to save the lives of the cats. But then there was no damage. Why did they have to kill them afterwards? I guess they had some weird, they didn't have anything to do with them. They had these weird contraptions installed in their brains. and they... I would, I would take it. Know, I'd be like, I yeah, too. I can track my cat's thoughts. It's amazing. I know. When I found out about this, I was very upset. I was like, why does this have to happen? They're like, it just does. And you didn't like, you have a key card. You didn't just go steal the cats afterwards. Like, oh yeah, what day is that? Okay. I just didn't want to say goodbye to my cat. He <laughs> he steal them all. Uh, Come on, Josh. Now looking back, I wish I saved all yeah, the cats. Yeah, me too. You know, there's a famous screenwriting book called Save the Cat. You yeah, <laughs> I was actually just thinking of that. I was like, save the cat. That reminds me of something. Oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, it's Simone. This is when like it's the whole concept of, you know, in a movie or a screenplay, if you have the main character, like save a cat at the beginning or the equivalent, that's something that like endears you to the to that protagonist moving forward. So now, therefore, <laughs> so we're not very endeared to you. I am right not. Now, Josh, yeah, because now you did opposite. not save any of the cats. No, yeah, I killed oh the cat. Oh, you did it. No, I didn't kill the cat. Oh my God. Dark joke. It's the stuff of nightmares. I want my cat to come and come for me right now. I regret a little bit diving into that. Let's get back to Simone saving lives. Oh my God. Sorry. Sorry, Simone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I had the same question too, I guess, was had you always wanted to become a doctor? But I guess you research was the first thing you were thinking of. I mean, yeah, I don't know that it was necessarily the first thing I was thinking of. It was more, I really didn't have any idea. Like I, I really just liked school because I got to learn about a bunch of different things and arts I you know our slogan was like indecision never looks so good like everybody oh that's great I like that I didn't even know that existed I yeah that sounds fun because you were always good at language arts too that's what I meant before with that really yeah anecdote that didn't fall with like the you read the books and you were like super into it like you were very oh and you were good at Hebrew too right you were good at everything. She was good at everything. Yeah, it's true. Like, what weren't you good at? Like, language arts. And I remember you used to get the Spanish award in school. And the one year that I got it, I was like, how did this happen? Did I get a higher mark than Simone? This was in, like, high school. And it turned out you had done the year. Yeah. Yeah. It was like you did, had done the I, next year's yeah. earlier or something. You did it yeah. early. So I was like, okay, well, whatever. I still got it. I'm happy. But, like, that was the only way I could be. Yeah. I did a <laughs> semester in Israel. And I wanted to take AB Spanish Lit. And so I did the grade 12 Spanish sooner but that's right yeah. yeah arts and science is not like fine arts it's like literature and like history and whatever I love that stuff so yeah I you know I was with a group of people who mostly also didn't have a specific direction in life so I was right at home until I had to decide what I had to do with my life yeah and you were like but you guys said indecision was <laughs> We were allowed to be indecisive here. But not I, for long. <laughs> not for long. No. So when you got into medical school, was it, did it feel like a good fit right away? Or was that, did you struggle with that? Or is no, it... it felt like a good fit. I mean, there's a lot of imposter syndrome in medical school mm. and amongst physicians mm. because you look around and everybody else seems like they're smarter than you are and they seem like they're more competent than you are or they know what they're doing more than you do but they're all just acting they're all just pretending yeah you sort of learn that everybody's kind of in the same boat and i reunited with a number of people from our high school class in medical school really, oh, really? who was there um so avni oh, oh yeah. avni does she yeah. still have that like huge long braid Remember she had the longest hair she did end up cutting her hair okay well i think she's grown it out again but for a while she actually had like short hair oh that's cute okay and uh mary did janice also go there or not am i crazy no janice didn't you were good friends with janice if i recall oh, right? i was good uh, yeah yeah no we were friends but she didn't go to medical school who else uh lucy yang i think she was actually a year ahead of us maybe all these like high school memories are flashing back every time you say a name hanbo Hanbo Zay. Hanbo, yeah. Humbo he did, did he do Hemonk or Medonk, something like that. He did his residency in Winnipeg, I think. You guys all went in together. That's crazy. Yeah. So I'm forgetting some people. So because Western, at least they did at that time, I don't know if they've changed that, but they 
sort of the way they rank people in the applications process, you get a little bit of an edge if you're local to Southwestern Ontario Mm -hmm. at Western for medical school, at least. So there were a lot of people, not just from our high school, like just from, you know, the area. I was just going to ask like how you decided because you went into did you go into emergency medicine I remember internal medicine internal medicine that was it I'm sorry Mm. yeah internal medicine right and did you decide that right away or were you like "Mm, I'm gonna just do some general stuff first and decide (laughs) I definitely did not decide that right away yeah I decided against surgery right away I didn't play enough video games or any video games as a kid and so my like oh and I coordination does that you're saying that playing video games is good for something was actually a really good thing (laughs) well if you want to be a surgeon but also like they have crazy I feel like they have some really intense stuff although you do some intense stuff too and I was just getting confused because you do work in emergency right Uh, I don't work in emergency but I see patients who come like I get referred patients who are coming through the emergency right. department to admit them to right. the hospital or ICU. what city by the way are you working in again right now uh, sorry Chatham mainly and I also work Chatham. in Windsor and Windsor yeah Windsor is basically right on the border basically it's like, yeah Chatham is yeah. in between London and Windsor and then yeah Chatham's Windsor's like halfway between yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was trying to remember. No, that's okay. So Windsor actually has like a satellite medical school from London. And so when I work there, I sometimes have like residents from and, and medical students too, which is kind of cool. Oh, okay. And then you get to teach them. Yeah. I mean, we have residents here in Chatham, but the only core program here is the family medicine. So, so you work in emergency. No, no, she no. doesn't. That's Sorry, me and I my missed... terrible memory. Oh, now I. <laughs> she think... works in the hospital. Yeah, ignore me. No, no, no. I'm... You told me all about it, and in my head, I went emergency, yeah. and but that's so incorrect. I, I no. in intensive care, emer- actually. Yeah, I do by default some intensive care, although it's not my like subspecialty of internal mm-hmm. medicine. I just am general internal medicine. But yeah, I sort of eliminated surgery right away, and then I didn't really eliminate much else very quickly i like to merge a lot because it's a lot of like acute interesting things what i didn't like about emerge is like never getting the answer mm. oh, yeah. like you never find out there's what no closure the, yeah exactly like oh this person you know we might have stabilized them but two days later they might have died of complications yeah. right you're just dealing with things in the moment kind of a- or we found this laboratory abnormality but we weren't there three days later when the investigations actually came back to tell us what was causing it and what the patient mm. actually has right so i didn't like that aspect of it and that's a really hard lifestyle also to maintain for your whole life to work shift work that sounds intense yeah and they're like 24 hour shifts is that a thing am i just making that up it depends what emerge you work in okay so i actually do 24 hour shifts as an intern. oh you still do but but it's not the same type of shift where you're seeing patients all the time all shift okay ideally emerge often they're eight hour shifts sometimes they're 12 hours I know in London they have a a couple of the overnight ones are actually like six hours Mm. so I came back to Canada recently like last I guess last year now but we all saw each other Mm. and I remember talking to you about this and I remember you were you were pretty overworked right like you (laughs) maybe because it was COVID times or whatever but like it's pretty intense job right like hours wise and yeah so I mean in terms of hours really any specialty you're in is going to have a lot of hours. So, you know, some of the family docs wouldn't do any hospital work. I did consider doing family medicine as well, but I really liked working in the hospital. Now here, like in particular in the community, like some of the family docs do work in the hospital, Mm -hmm. but it's not the same because you're splitting your practice a lot more. You know, you see your patients kind of on the side whenever you can Mm. hospital and it's not yeah. And then you see a lot of well, the kind of the worried well, mm. and the just like well checkups. And I kind of like to see the problems that you have to figure out. You're not interested in the worried well. <laughs> it's not a major part of my practice. You don't want me asking you like why sometimes my arm goes like this and it cracks and it doesn't hurt or feel, but I'm just wondering what's happening. Is that? Um, we have some no, laxity in your elbow no. joint. <laughs> I was just like, that's an annoying thing that someone comes for, right? Oh, it did just crack. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Your favorite part of it, of doing what you do is kind of the problem solving aspect and, you know, figuring out, did you ever watch the show House? I watched some of it. I know that it's not perfectly. It's probably annoying. I think it's annoying for people who actually do that stuff to have someone be like, this is this, this is obviously this, right? I'm sure that um, wasn't totally accurate. (laughs) I watched it before. 
for I think I, I think I watched some of it in undergrad and what actually annoyed me more at that point was not like the medical parts but was like some of the side stories were just so infuriating but yeah. <laughs> just the actual like drama of the show <laughs> the drama yeah. yeah I mean I have I guess I've watched a couple of episodes since then it's not like the worst show ever I actually loved it but I don't know as a doctor what it would be like I never watched it I'm sorry no I, I that's what I, I just know it's not, it. I, mean, I don't mean that it's a bad show I, I just meant that it's not like there is a lot of absurdity there yeah but there is some like cool like oh I wonder what these things mean together I just thought he was the best like character I'd ever seen on tv not saying it's the best show of all time but I love the character of House because he's this misanthropic doctor, meaning he doesn't like people, but he has to save their lives. He has to interact with the patient. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like... there's a lot of things he does very poorly as a doctor. Like, yeah. He well, does he not have good bedside manner? I imagine. No. <laughs> he also thinks everything is lupus when it's not, if I recall. Oh, but that's like, so that's like a medical <laughs> joke where like, yeah. it's never lupus, but like you always consider lupus. <laughs> is that like an actual medical joke? Like, were they stealing that from a real? Like, yeah, that's, that's like a real thing where like oh. because lupus can present in so many different ways like it's often on the differential for like weird and wonderful presentations oh i remember in the final season somebody actually had lupus or something for the first time <laughs> it was like a thing even the, when i rewatched episodes or watched new episodes since medical school i've still like enjoyed it to some extent there's some shows like oh what was it i think it was chicago med uh-huh. i watched like the first episode and at the very end, this person's trying to figure out how like he missed a heart attack in a patient. And he's like trying to ask his colleague about it. And he's like staring at his computer screen being like, I don't understand how I missed it. And then it like pans to like the computer screen and they're looking at an x-ray. And I was like, well, that's how you missed it. You didn't look at the EKG. <laughs> 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 looking at the wrong test completely oh my god so i stopped watching that show after oh and most people show. wouldn't even understand that but to you it's such an obvious thing well to me that was just like so like there's no reason they couldn't have got that right right that's just bad writing <laughs> yeah i think even i know that just, and like, i don't know anything about that like why right. i mean i wouldn't notice it but i'd be like that's x-rays don't show yeah it wasn't like they were pointing it wasn't like there was something on the x-ray that they were actually that was like an interesting x-ray oh it was just it was just like they're <laughs> make they're using the wrong test they're just so. using like right. medical things in the background yeah. but it's not like yeah. the specific thing that they actually need so it's like <laughs> yes the reason i brought up that you know the show too is just because i was wondering is that something that problem solving investigative aspect i think like house for example characters named house and then there's his buddy wilson yeah. which is supposed to be like holmes and watson basically yeah like basically sherlock holmes as a doctor is that something that you like that investigative yeah. aspect yeah, yeah. And a lot of internal medicine, which is really hard to define, but it's sort of particularly general internal medicine, because there are a lot of subspecialties within that, like cardiology or respirology or whatever. And they're in some ways, they're not silos, but you might send a patient to cardiologist and they see them and they say, yeah, there's nothing wrong with your heart. And then you're like, well, but they still have X, Y, and Z symptoms and mm-hmm. signs. And so something is wrong. So the nice thing about general internal medicine is you sort of work up anything and sort of the interactions between different illnesses and everything like that. So it does seem like a good application of your holistic intelligence. (laughs) It does. Yeah. You like that word holistic? Yeah, I do. I really like it. I do. Good job, Josh. (laughs) You and your words. Yeah. Cause like you get to be, you're interested in a lot of things. So it makes sense that you pick something general. And I, now I remember we were talking about this, like in your backyard Mm -hmm. when I saw you briefly and like, yeah, like it keeps things interesting. Right. And you're still always learning a little bit. It's not just like, you pick a specialty and you narrow your focus, right? Like you're still yeah. aware of a lot of things going on and considering yeah. a lot of different things at, at once. It's hard because you have to stay current on yeah. a lot of things. You always got to be learning. You love learning. You it's like learning. You never stop learning just because you leave school, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So then maybe this is a good time to jump into, because we're talking about healthcare. So you are, you know, working within the Canadian healthcare system, right? Mm-hmm. It's a public hospital you work at? I work at, again, Chatham Hospital and then the two hospitals in Windsor. And they're all public. Uh, we don't have. There's just a thing as a private hospital. We don't have private hospitals here. <laughs> right. Well, that's yeah. what I'm getting at too. I, oh, that's I, what you're I, looking for. Kind of, but I also wasn't, I thought that was the case, but I'm so there are getting s- it mixed up now because I live in the U.S. West now, right? And I, yeah. I'm forgetting what is and isn't the case in Canada. In well, correct me if I'm wrong, Simone, but there are some like on the edge sort of clinics that charge for certain things and kind of present themselves as like 
healthcare that yeah, you pay so, for in a way, right? But I mean, they're a little bit. So hmm. there are many clinics that are outside of the hospital. And some like in London, for example, like there's actually a scoping center that's outside of the hospital. And that's literally, it actually helps the system because okay. you don't need to rely on the space in the hospital to do those procedures. So it allows you okay. to do more procedures, but those are still, but those are still free actually publicly funded because Nobody, no doctor in Canada and specifically Ontario, because each healthcare thing is provincially run, but you are not allowed to charge for a OHIP funded. Right. Okay. OHIP is the anything. So that's our Ontario health insurance program. Right. That's the public funded stuff. So there are some other things that can be charged so for. There are but... things that aren't okay. considered that aren't OHIP covered basically. And right. so okay. you're, some private insurance companies might cover that. Like if you have added right. insurance or insurance through your work. Right. But, okay. And I've heard there's horror stories where certain things aren't some drug or something isn't covered by OHIP, right? Yeah. And, so the and... drugs are a problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. Drugs right. is a whole separate issue. But if we're talking about like seeing the doctor or, you know, having a procedure done, like a surgery, mm -hmm. anything medically necessary basically would be covered. But there are some things that wouldn't be covered. So like if you're getting breast implants or something like that. Uh, yeah, I would hope those yeah, are not covered. A... Those are that's yeah, that's very unnecessary. Be if <laughs> yeah. you're having reconstructive surgery on your breast because you had a bilateral mastectomy that's different, because yeah. you have breast cancer, that is covered. Oh, okay. Right, right. right. And yeah, so yeah. a plastic surgeon might do both of those, but mm -hmm. they would only charge you for the ones that aren't covered. Right. By OHIP. Okay, makes sense. So then there are private, and that oh, makes so much more sense to me. And I, I want to get into that. But just for my American friends who don't understand how the Canadian system works, and we do have American friends actually who are listening to this. And I've had to explain what would sound so basic to us coming from Canada. We all get a health card in Canada. What does this allow us to do basically? So it allows you to see any doctor. Unlike the States, you can't just like phone up a doctor and like book an appointment to see them. So a lot of our care is driven by primary care providers, like our family doctors, basically, who you'd see first. They refer you, right? And then they would refer you to a specialist if they needed to, or they'll manage your problem if they're able to. Right. And they'll start work up and things like that as well. And whenever you have a, you know, if you need to go to the doctor, you just go to your family doctor yeah. usually, right? And yeah. you don't worry about any extra type of payment usually. Yeah. Maybe parking. I don't know. Yeah. Depending <laughs> on where your doctor works. Depending. Yeah. And then if you need some other thing done, they refer you to a hospital, right? Or something like that. Yeah. Or a specialist. So like my office, like where I see outpatients is not in the hospital. It's separate from the hospital, but... And then if you went to the hospital, say, you know, you were having something that was more emergent, like you're having, you know, severe abdominal pain and it's midnight, you, <laughs> you can take an ambulance to the hospital. Now the ambulance will still send you a bill that you pay for. You do get a bill yeah. for ambulances. So yeah, but not, it's still somewhat subsidized, right? Yes. Yeah. It's not going to be a thousand dollar bill. Like here. Many people in this area. It's not the price, but they'll have somebody drive them to the hospital because they think it's faster, which has its own set of problems. Because they, they're That's living crazy. out in the country and they're like, oh, the ambulance is going to take forever to get oh, to Oh, right. But that might the happen. thing is that when the ambulance gets to you, they will A, triage your problem and potentially help you manage it on the way right. to the hospital. That's right. The ambulance is a little <laughs> hospital sometimes, right? Whereas if you arrest in your loved one's car, that is going to be a problem mm -hmm. and they're going to be traumatized. But uh, that's another tangent. Um, so yeah, so any of your care in the hospital, any medications you receive in hospital, all the doctors, all the nurses, the RTs, the physios are all covered. So you don't get any bill mm -hmm. unless you don't have that health card. Right. Which, you know, I'm struggling right now to whether I'm going to be holding on to my health card much longer. Why? How do you still have a health card? Oh, have you been resident in Ontario for six months of the last 12 months? Yeah. Do you still have that red one <laughs> that doesn't update? I kept that red one for forever. No, I do. I have an updated health card, oh, okay. but it, you know, it's coming to a point where I'm not going to be coming back. So basically yeah. I'm going to have to make a choice. Yeah. I mean, if you have insurance, I do you really spend at least six months of the year here? 
<laughs> yeah. So I mean, technically, you don't have a valid Ontario health card, even though you pretending you do. <laughs> what? No, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Get, Maybe get I do spend six Josh, months of the year there. Police are coming. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm sure you card. do. I'm sure you do, and you just neglected to come and see me. That's yeah, true. Josh. If you're spending six months here, you're a dick. I sorry, I was there for six months, but I didn't say hi. <laughs> but realistic, I mean, you could always. So COVID has actually made this much easier. But say you were a former resident, like my mom. So she moved to the States and then she no longer had a health card here. But if she had moved back, there would have been like a certain waiting period. And then they would have just given her back her health card, obviously. And then in COVID, they waived the waiting period. So you would have just automatically got oh. health coverage immediately. Oh. So this is like a huge kind of point of contention, obviously in America. But for me personally, probably the most most passionate I get about like an issue politically, especially is healthcare here especially just the more I've seen of the US and our system here. And that's not to say that Canada has like a perfect system. And I've heard you actually complain about a bunch of issues there as well, right? Which you could, you know, pl please get into. But just at like its most basic level, I've had people here try to genuinely argue to me that it's a better system to have health insurance as a person who needs health care. And I can see that if you have a lot of money, it can be be in your benefit, like if money is not an issue for you. But as a whole on society, you know, healthcare shouldn't be something in my view, that is a privilege for people who have money. It's not like, oh, today, I think I'd like to get a computer and insulin. Yeah. It's not some sort of product that if you have more money, you should be able to get better of necessarily it's like a basic need. It's a need that everybody yeah. has. So it should be treated as as a human being, the person who is most in need should get priority, not the person with the most amount of money. That's my personal view, but I'm very passionate about that. And I see this view here that some people, they fight so hard to say that the insurance, because it's a certain way already, there must be a reason it's this way. So people, if they don't know any better, they don't understand that other countries, like every other developed nation in the world has a public healthcare system. They fight for the dumbest system here. And it just makes me go insane. But so insurance, so technically OHIP is insurance. Y okay, yes. It's just one you don't pay for, right? Yeah, it's a public insurance. Yeah, I mean, the sad thing is that you know, Canada is not actually like the be all and end all. No, no. Canada is one of the worst of the developed healthcare. nations healthcare. I understand yeah. that. So I know a little bit about Germany because my uncle lives there part time. Okay. And we've talked a little bit about this. And I think I don't know when it was we looked at that. It must have been in some medical school class. They actually everybody has to be under health insurance. OK, mm -hmm. so if you're working your employer pays your health insurance. If you're self-employed, there's like a government plan basically that you pay for. Right. So whatever, which way. Or if you're unemployed, the same thing, you have a government plan that you're, you're not paying into, but you're so if you lose your job there, you'll just go on to the public. Yes. So you still right. have. Because here in America, just for the record, your healthcare is tied to your employer usually, which means people don't leave their jobs because it's a benefit, quote unquote, for them to get health care yeah. from their employer, which is so dumb, yeah. in my opinion. So there are actually different insurance companies there. Yeah. And so they're actually instead of so here we have like a single payer system, basically right. for each province, right? Yeah. So in Germany, it's still basically a public health system, but it's like four insurance companies rather than one. Right. And they compete with each other a little bit. Yeah. So there's some advantages to that in that when they're competing with each other, it's not just like a be all and end all, like we've made this decision right. covered and screw you if that's something that you don't need. Right. One might cover something, the other uh, doesn't. Oh, yeah. Right. But there are certain things that the government mandates that they cover. Mm -hmm. And so there's still, you know, basically everybody has a similar basic amount that they would get covered as you do here in Ontario. Right. But I'm pretty sure things like medications and I actually shouldn't say pretty sure I don't know details around the medications but like here in Ontario if you're under the age of 25 over the age of 65 or you're like on welfare like unemployment Ontario works so you don't mm -hmm. have a job right now then you have Ontario drug benefit coverage for their list of formulary medications if you're not like you're me or you're the person working full-time at the grocery store and you don't have a health care plan with work, you have no coverage for medications at all. Mm. 
And so if you have a heart attack when you're 55 and you end up on six or seven medications, all of which are designed to keep you alive and keep you healthy until you're 80. That's a problem. You might not actually be able to afford that. Yeah. And there's no help for someone like that? Is there like... There are programs, like there's a program called Trillium, but they will make you pay a deductible basically. Mm. Some people who are like barely making ends meet, like can't pay the deductible either yeah so what you're explaining right there to me is obviously a flaw and and an issue with the Canadian healthcare system but what's crazy to me is that's what is like ah that's like a situation that can happen in Canada is the status quo in America so like you could break your leg here and go bankrupt And there's a whole, it's probably not worth getting into the way, the reasons hospitals and everything charge as much as they do. Everything is just like super inflated from what I understand because things are covered and because a lot of people can't pay, like the actual amounts that you see on your bills are ridiculous, right? So then when they say, hey, this thing costs $40,000, but we're going to cover most of it. So you only have to pay $2,000 and everyone goes, wow, thank God. And it's like, you went, you like, you got some Tylenol or something from... (laughs) When you went in, you're still paying $2,000 and they make it seem like you're getting a good deal or the way deductibles work here with the insurance or the co-pays. No matter what, it seems you're always paying one way or another. And I just know from like personal experience, you know, as someone who's kind of poor, like I don't go to the doctor if I can avoid it. Like I don't go to, even if I think I need something, I don't want to have to deal with a bill. And I think that's one of the reasons there's worse health outcomes in the United States, because we don't look at it as, you know, in preventative in that sort of way, or as a public issue. I don't know if you agree with that. but Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of disadvantages to not covering healthcare for everybody, because you end up with, you know, the rich people being able to afford care and the poor people either not being able to afford care or being pretty sure nobody's going to help them out and just not Mm -hmm. going to the doctor or the hospital because they feel that they won't be able to afford it. So one of the arguments here that I've heard people say is the waiting times are worse in Canada. You know, if you go with a Canadian system or a single payer or just a public health care system, you're going to have to wait in line for something really important. Is that true or is that true in context? Like what is your experience, especially as a doctor, with that statement? Uh, it is it is true. I think, though, that it's true that it's a flaw in our system that needs to be fixed within the Canadian system, because not every public health care system like many of like Sweden and Norway, I think, do a lot better than we do on some of those parameters. Mm-hmm. So like the wait time, you know, the classic example is like an, a knee or a hip surgery. Right. Tends to be a much longer wait here than in the States. And you could argue, and people do argue, that if we had a two-tiered system here. Like Australia, right? People who could afford it could pay to get their knee done sooner. And that would free up space in the other system so that people who can't afford it would still get their surgery done. But there are a lot of problems with that system too. Right. Because then- Who puts any sort of funding into the public system if they- Yeah. If you have a deluxe- option, right? And do all the quote unquote good doctors. The go good to doctors the- go to the private side, right? And that's the problem. So like, obviously not such a developed country, but like Chile has a two tiered system. If you go to the private hospitals, they're fabulous hospitals, you know, private room, great yeah. doctor, short wait times. <laughs> the public ones are not so good. And the public ones, it, it's not that, you know, the doctors are the same trained doctors and I'm sure very altruistic. But their resources but are they're re- Exactly. They might, mm. you know, they're only CAT scanners broke they're you know mm-hmm. they just don't have whatever resources they need to get you into the operating room on time type yeah of thing, right so that certainly is not a better system for the overall population yeah and you also like there should be ways to improve on the public system without creating a tiered system so yeah done like somewhere in i think it was alberta they looked at, they didn't even, it's not like they increased the number of doctors or nurses. They just, they did something like a centralized triage system for hips and knee surgeries for like a group of orthopedic surgeons. And they managed to make their system more efficient so they could get more hips and knees done, even though they had the same amount of OR time hmm. and the same amount of doctors and nurses mm-hmm. and anesthesiologists. So, you know, we need more ways to get rid of inefficiencies in the system. We yeah. Have. 
have rather than and that's your biggest issue right is that you see yeah. a lot of inefficiencies in the system in Canada right yeah and unfortunately some of that comes from the way the billing system works which is still has not been changed since I forget I learned that in medical school too, what, what year the publicly funded system here came into effect. But the way like physicians get remunerated by billing per patient encounter or things like that is a little bit odd at times. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't reflect always where you're spending your time. Right. So a family doctor may see 30 patients in a day to try and make ends meet. And then they, after seeing all those people, they do three hours of paperwork, four hours of paperwork that they don't get paid anything for. Oh. In theory, that paperwork is paid as part of their visit. But in order to see that many people per day, they had to see each of them in five minutes or 10 minutes. Right. Right. So it's a little bit, there's a nuance that isn't addressed there with how payment is distributed. Yeah. Basically, you sometimes spend a lot of your time in fact, a lot of the time you spend a lot of your time not doing the things that you actually get paid for. And so mm. that ends up meaning that, unfortunately, there are a lot of people in the system who just don't want to do the work that you're not getting paid for. Right. Or that are cutting corners so that they are getting paid right. for what they feel the work they deserve. But there are whatever. things that need to be done still that just aren't being paid for. So I've heard that, uh, you know, I've heard these, um, I think I just stab myself with a hair. That's so weird. Okay. With a hair? I have a little like. Well, we have a doctor here. No, I need. have a beard. Can you help me out? No. I have a... <laughs> Can you imagine going to talk? I think I stabbed myself with my beard hair. No, my beard hair is really sharp. And... <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and it just like got a sliver in my finger from like a beard hair. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> You're so sweet, Simone. It's not interesting. Josh, get over it. You're fine. Okay. Um... It's I'm a fine. Beard hair. It hurts a lot, but I'm fine. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have nerves in your fingers. You're fine. So. I was just going to say, hold on one second. Did it have to do with beard hair? No, it didn't. I Sharp beard hair. distracted myself. Were you like, were you sharpening your beard hair? Like, how do you cut it? Are you like sharpening it to a point? Oh, I just have a very sharp beard. I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I've heard these criticisms that obviously, as you understand better than anybody, need to be addressed in Canada. What frustrates me sometimes is that people don't realize a lot of those same criticisms are still here as well. Mm-hmm. You know, especially, yeah. for example, I'm on something called Medi-Cal in California, it's like basically a public kind of funding, you know, if you basically if you don't make much money, Mm -hmm. you can get on this system. And I have to make like very little money. Thankfully, I make very little money. So I'm able to be on this system. But it's not like, oh, great, I get wonderful free healthcare. It's terrible. The wait times I've experienced here are way worse than anything I've ever experienced in Canada. When I had to go in for like a surgery, I had to wait like two years or something like that to do. Uh, I had an umbilical hernia surgery or I had a lipoma on my back. Oh, yeah, that's longer than you would wait here for sure. Yeah. And <laughs> not only is it longer than you'd wait here, but well, except for COVID, I don't know how far backed up they are with COVID for surgeries like that. But mm. even the hips and knees aren't waiting that long. Mm. And they're additionally the ones with the longer wait time. The umbilical hernia didn't take me long. It was a lipoma on my back, I think, that I had a super long wait and a whole issue with that. What type of doctor removed that? Uh, one that does surgery. A plastic surgeon or a dermatologist? I think it was or... just a, I don't know. I don't know. I was out. A doctor? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Josh. They knocked me out during the general time. surgeon? You were asleep. <laughs> it was a surgeon of some sort. I don't remember. The, I, uh, I wish I could tell you. That's, well, I just, there's some surgical services here that also, you know, they're not as many of them. And so by definition, you might end up waiting longer, like to see a specialist, for example, because you just don't have the same yeah. number of specialists around. So that's also a factor in wait times, but like special triage their referrals too obviously it's like a in a sense a two well (laughs) we don't actually have a public system but because we have certain things in certain states like for example in california to help people who have lower income it's like a two-tiered system in that sense for some things and then you do get the sense like oh yeah the public stuff is terribly funded and this huge wait times of course if you have a lot of money you can jump ahead in line obviously for people who have a lot of money it's going to seem like a much better deal, you know, when you can get really, really fast service in the healthcare industry. But I think a lot of people don't realize that they're not that rich. And also, they don't know if they're going to lose their job one day. You know, you lose your job, you lose your coverage. I brought this up before on this podcast. I have a friend who lives in the house with me now, and he's like famous now. He's a conductor and a music director of like multiple symphonies. He's making lots of money. 
doing really well. I've known him for like eight years. I've lived in this house with him. And many years back, he was still, he hadn't yet gotten any of these jobs. He had finished school. He hadn't yet been able to find work. And he had no health care coverage at this time. And there was like a party in the house. And his girlfriend at the time, like came up to me and she was like, Josh, Troy won't wake up. We don't know what's going on. He won't wake up. I'm sure like I wasn't the first person she wanted to come to to say that. I'm sure she tried a few other people she couldn't reach. And it's like, I guess I got to go talk to Josh. <laughs> and so I came upstairs to like check on him. And sure enough, you're like, yeah, nothing you could do would wake him up. That said, he was, he seemed to be breathing and all that stuff, but he, nothing would wake him up. And we didn't understand what was going on. And eventually like people at the party and all around the house, by the way, I should mention, he still holds to this day. He had hardly anything to drink. He didn't really have anything. He doesn't know why this happened. We're all standing around him and people are like yelling and shaking him, trying to, nothing is waking him up. And me and one of the other guys in the house, we were like, I guess, should we, we should call the ambulance, right? We should call an ambulance to help him out. Yeah. And then we were like, <laughs> oh, wait, he doesn't have he insurance good. right now. Oh, no. Do you think he would want, maybe we should, there was someone who knew a little healthcare stuff in the house. She worked in healthcare. Jeez. Maybe she's going to check on him first. And like he could have died while you're asking that question. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But that's, you know, because of we knew how important it was to him that this could ruin everything for him. We weren't thinking straight, you know, in the moment. So I thought, though, at least in the emergency department in the States, they had to treat you even if you didn't. Oh, no, they'll treat you and then you'll get a giant bill. Right. Um, But if you can't pay the bill, (laughs) then you're alive, I think. (laughs) <laughs> well, there's sure, sure. But we were, you know, you still have to deal with a bill and the stress of that sure. and everything afterwards. Yeah. So we thought for some reason that we could, given what we had just been told by someone who was at the house that he seems to be breathing and everything fine. So we thought we could wait a moment. Looking back, we totally should have called the ambulance, yeah, right? Happening? But in the moment, yeah. this was actually a conversation that we never would have had, I think, in Canada. No, of course not. After like, I think it was an hour of this, he actually woke up. He woke up and he's like, why are you guys all, he's like half naked, like in bed. An hour? He's like, why is everybody in my, he, like, he felt very vulnerable. Like, why is everybody standing around me? We're like, you wouldn't wake up. He's like, what? I don't know. He didn't understand. Mm-hmm. And he was fine. He couldn't figure out ever what happened. He came up. So he's just after. like a deep sleeper or something? No, we don't know. He thinks okay. he was drugged or something. I don't know. Oh. He came up to me and my friend after. He was like, I just want to thank you guys for not calling, you know, the ambulance or oh because I, that would have really screwed me over. <gasps> and I was like, dude. We should have called it. No. Like, honestly, That's like, so great crazy, that it all man. worked out, but we totally should have called it. And I always think back on this story for how broken the system is here, that that was even a choice. That's like internalized that you shouldn't buy, that you shouldn't buy, buy an ambulance, that you shouldn't mm. call an ambulance. Yeah, yeah. It's such a, there's That's so many, crazy. it's not just falling through the cracks. There's cracks everywhere in this system, especially since then I've become very passionate about, I'm not saying make it like, can't make it better than Canada's system. Canada has a lot of yeah. issues, but I remember I, I argued with my, I still argue with my dad to this day. My dad, for some reason, is like weirdly conservative about a lot of these things. He thinks America is the best thing ever. And he's, you know, my dad's still in London, Ontario. And he's always talked about how the American systems are better and healthcare is better. He's always telling me how healthcare is better over there. And my dad has had cancer since, I don't know, it's been like 12 years. He still technically has cancer. It's not gone. At the beginning, he was given like months to live and he's still here today somehow. I'm like, Dad, do you know what, <laughs> if you had that cancer, if you were in the United States, I don't know, if it, I'm like, I even asked him, like, how much money did you have to pay to fight your cancer in, in Canada? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, the fact that you're asking, what do you mean? Is I'm like, what, what bills have you received for fighting this cancer? He's like, none. What do you mean? They pay through our taxes to, I'm like, yeah, you don't even have to worry about that. Imagine that you had to deal with this and, you know, insurance stuff and everything in the United States. I mean, he still doesn't, he won't agree with me, but I still believe strongly that one of the reasons that he's doing okay is because of the Canadian system. I'm not saying it's perfect for everybody, but I know I, I also wanted to ask you someone because I know you had a different, ex- you have an experience actually with the American system with something similar, right? Yeah, well, so, I mean, uh, my sister and I were actually nervous when my mom moved to the States because well, at least I think she had the same sort of qualms that we were worried because she already had cancer at that point but she was in remission and we're sort of worried that she would fall through the cracks but she just called around and got a gynecologist to follow her Hmm. and then when the cancer came back she so my stepfather I don't know if you guys know he's a rabbi who um I didn't know that teach like 
well, I guess taught, but he's still involved in the Hebrew Union College, like the Reformed Jewish Seminary okay. in the New York office, basically. So, and he's a PhD also in like liturgy and he's sort of the eminent scholar in that field in the Reformed Jewish movement. And so he knows like the whole Jewish community in New York. I mean, he doesn't know wow. them all personally, but he knows all the rabbis in their Jewish community. And so, you know, like Mayor Bloomberg goes to Temple Emmanuel, which is one of the Reform Jewish oh, wow. uh, congregations in New York. So, and that's where your mother was they living there. Yeah, so they're living in Westchester County, which is just north of the city a bit, like on the commuter lines. And so, when she got, so she was told by her gynecologist that she was going to be referred to this lyomyosarcoma specialist. So basically a specialist in her type of cancer, like uterine lyomyosarcomas. And she called their like patient line and the patient line was like, oh no, we're not accepting new patients at this time. And then Larry was talking to some of his friends and one of his friends was like, oh, you need a liver surgeon. Here's this liver surgeon at Memorial Sloan Kettering who called her the next day. I was like, yeah, of course we'll operate. And then that specialist, you know, got her in to see the uterine myosarcoma specialist, right? You guys had a good who you know yeah, exactly. Going on there. Who do you know in the system? And I mean, they had reasonably good insurance as well. Right. And like, there was one thing um, at one point, she had lesions in her lungs Oy. and they were doing not an experimental treatment, but like a radio ablation basically of those lesions, which is not something that's done a lot of places. Mm-hmm. And the insurance company like didn't pay it or something because they said it was experimental. And so they got a bill for it and they, they called the doctor and he was like, oh no, no, that's ridiculous. The insurance company has to pay for it. And if not, the hospital will absorb the cost, right? Mm-hmm. That's good at least. So uh, yeah, it's like really about who you know and mm-hmm. what your insurance covers and what you can afford to cover, mm-hmm. which is, you know, turned out well for my mom. But if she hadn't known but, those people, you know, exactly. then what? At the time, they had the right kind of community there. For yeah, that, if, right? if they, you know, if they're in a world where they don't know anybody and they don't know who to call or who to talk to. and. Yeah you don't have any connections. Like yeah. how do you navigate that system where you don't have a family doctor who can connect you? Yeah. It's still amazing to me that an insurance company can just be like, yeah, we're not going to cover that. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's like, of course they would choose mm. if they can to not cover something. Cause that yeah. means not paying for something Yeah, and giving an insurance company the choice to do that. And even if they're wrong, you have to fight them in court or whatever. Like it's, yeah. to me, it's the stress of dealing with the bill that on top of having to deal with fighting uh, a disease or an illness, like that to me is unfathomable. And yet that happens here all the time. Like you have to, you know, people having to maybe lose their house because they have to choose whether they're going to fight a disease or not. And it sounds to me like the system, you you know, at least at the time, you you know, your mother didn't fall through the cracks like some people because they had a good community of people looking out at the time. But from your understanding of was that is that the norm for people in the US or is that I don't think so I, I mean I think it depends on in part where you are right and how much money you have and what insurance you have I think you know it, it sounds like so the insurance did end up paying for that procedure but like not every little town and village and whatever has access to like the premier cancer center <laughs> that also does research and things like that and can absorb some of those costs if needed. And if you're in like Alabama, like if you don't have money, I'm pretty sure you just don't see a doctor ever because you don't have any medical insurance options. I'm sure I doubt that they have Medicaid or any equivalent for Alabama. Right. So uh, seeing as this is clearly going to be a two-parter, what do you guys say we take a little break? Sounds good. Until next week. It's lies. These are lies. And He's telling you lies. It's I'm not, not lying. Really it's not, it's exactly. We're all going to we record all of this then, in one session. No, we're going to stop and we're going to all come together again one week later and directly continue this conversation as if no time has passed at all. Sounds good. So, what do you say we wrap up part one? Let's wrap it up, the little bow. Simone's nodding. She's okay with this. Okay. This is an audio format. Yeah, to, <laughs> yeah they don't know you're audio. nodding. <laughs> For all they know, you don't agree, Simone, that you, you want to do one two hour long episode. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. We can wrap it up. Okay. Right. I'm trying to think of another advert. For next oh, you're, oh, oh she's for, planning. You're already planning for next episode's <laughs> advert. Simone. That's great. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay.
Good. You have a week to think about it. Oh, good. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Thank you for listening. <laughs> and if you enjoyed this episode, please follow us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page that Josh keeps relatively updated and puts little things there. And follow us wherever you like to listen, whether that be Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, anywhere you like to listen. So yeah, thanks for listening. And please join us next week as we continue our conversation with Dr. Simone Mendel. On healthcare. Yeah. Simone's waving. Jazz hands. <laughs> oh, I thought she was applause, doing- Applause, applause. Oh. A deaf applause. That's a plus Yeah. Thing? Josh, you don't know ALS. No, me neither. What? <laughs> Is that but, ALS? I, I know so. the thing that people do with the, the finger snapping that I, I don't like it at all, but- what is this? No, thing? that's just like hippies. This is hippies. <laughs> this is ALS. Okay. <laughs> He's saying this is just kind of waving your hand. What does that mean? Applause. It's like applause. Clapping. If you're like you're clapping. If you're deaf, I still understand what this means, though. I don't understand. It's just part of the sign language. Oh, it's just a different part, different language, basically. Yeah, yeah. it is a different language. Actually, they're going to teach it at Western. I'm so. not shitting on ALS. I'm just saying. I just, <laughs> Sounds I don't like you understand. are. I think you are. I guess I just didn't ALS. understand why. It, it, I felt like this, maybe this means something else. No, because else. this is more heard and people could clap different ways. Some people clap like this. And this is more universal. Yeah, I think. And visual. I think this the, looks the way this sounds. Yeah, exactly. Because the impact of clapping is like when is an auditorium sound. full of people is yeah, clapping, yeah. then you hear hear it right exactly but yeah. when, if the impact of people, people like going this, like this is going to be more yeah. obvious than people going like this exactly josh do we have to teach you everything <laughs> <laughs> i do need to learn about this i don't know anything about it unless it's on and the apparently. snapping i really do think that's just a hippie thing isn't it it's a dumb thing i'm not sure i don't know i did it at my camp and it was a hippie i hate it for some yeah. reason i don't know why i'm very judgmental it's like of this stuff. not an aggressive way of showing your support so instead of like clapping like it's like I just picture a lot so of people it's who like are after high someone with their like guitars. A, a poetry just, slam. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, poetry that's slam what I'm style. You. Yeah, it's some hippy dippy. As someone who wrote a poetry book, I do not approve. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>